I have a very important monumental question as we begin the day today. When we, we when, when it, can someone put their finger on it? When did people get stupid? Just general. I, I mean, I realize people are generally stupid, but when did people just lose their minds in, in, in an era of epic stupidity? You know how everything the left doesn't like is racism. Uh, they, it, it's racist if you if you live in a nice neighborhood and there there aren't enough people of of other ethnicities or races there. It's it's racism, de facto racism. If you if you send your kids to private school, it's racism. The Second Amendment is racist. Everything they don't like is racist. They've cheapened the word racism by saying things are racist that are not racist. And now conservatives are doing it with segregation, and it's driving me crazy. There's a restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia. Marjorie Taylor Greene, the the QAnon uh, congresswoman, is shaming the restaurant. I think it's called Argosi or something like that. It's in Hipsterville, Atlanta. And they put up a sign outside saying, please don't eat here if you're not vaccinated or, or only vaccinated people or some such. Now, it comes after several of their staff members uh, got COVID and they had to shut down. Uh, my understanding is they believe that it was uh, patrons at the business who caused it, not the employees getting it, but maybe it was the employees unvaccinated. I have no idea. But nonetheless, the restaurant now says, uh, don't eat here if you're not vaccinated. And you got a bunch of conservatives saying, this is segregation. No, no, it's not segregation, you idiots. It's not segregation. Segregation involves immutable characteristics given to you by God. Segregation is God made you male. Uh, you got to sit over here. God made you female. Sit over there. God made you black. Sit in the back. Segregation is not, hey, uh, you say you got the vaccine and you didn't. Uh, I don't know because I don't have police power to enforce this. Segregation was based on police powers of the state that business is used. It is possible. It is actually possible to say, hey, I think that a business should have the right to say this, but the government shouldn't have the power to enforce it. it it's, it's possible. You know, You there are plenty of other restaurants. In fact, I, I Googled, I Googled around this particular restaurant. There are, wait for it, there are other restaurants people can go to. You, you know, if, if your alternative is the business should be forced to allow me in and should have no say, uh, then you're on team bake the cake bigot. Do you want to be on team bake the cake bigot? Do you want to force the Christian baker to bake the cake? Do you want to force the Christian baker to bake the cake? Do you, do you want to force the Christian photographer to be forced against their will at the risk of losing their business to show up and photograph the gay marriage that they don't want to photograph because they believe it violates their deeply held religious beliefs. Do you want them to do that? Do, are you saying, no, no, I don't. Well, then you got to let the business decide that we don't want people here who haven't been vaccinated because it risks our livelihoods by having them come in and spread the virus to other people and word of mouth goes out that, hey, I ate at this restaurant and I got COVID from it. When did people become such self-centered idiots? I didn't actually begin, intend to start the program here, but uh, I, I noted on social media that the restaurant should be entitled to say, hey, if you don't have the vaccine, uh, we would we don't want you to come eat here. And a bunch of conservatives say, this is segregation. No, it's not segregation, you idiots. Segregation is a word that actually means something. You are no better than the leftists screaming racism about everything if you actually believe that. When did people become so stupid and not very thoughtful? You can go elsewhere. You can go elsewhere. And by the way, there's a great big difference between a million bajillion restaurants you can go to and three social media platforms. So don't give me that. It's just like big tech. Do you think big tech to be able to discriminate against us? There's a big difference. You can distinguish a nuance. But if all you got is a hammer, everything's a nail. This is this is people's world. And by the way, it's not conservatism. It, it is it is populist reactionaryism. 
It's not conservatism actually tends to mean uh, the individual should be able to pick and choose for himself and and also deal with the consequences of that choice. You know, you don't get to make choices in life and then escape consequences. If I take my paycheck tomorrow and go to Las Vegas and lose it at the casino, I don't get to demand my money back to pay the rest of my bills. It's a consequence of my choice. I have the right to go do it. And then if I lose my money, I, I, I have to take the consequences. If I decide I believe the crazy conspiracy cranks online about the vaccine and don't want it, well, then the business has the right to say, hey, we would prefer you not eat here. I don't know how this is hard. It's only hard because you want it to be hard. Uh, you, you want it to be difficult. It's not actually difficult. It's actually very easy. Live and let live. And your business, you get to decide. If, you know, it's it's really weird here uh, when the abortionists are screaming my body, my choice, and now the conservatives are screaming my body, my choice, but the business owner doesn't get to scream my business, my choice. The businesses, which are composed of individuals, aren't supposed to. And by the way, I, I should point out that the major difference is that with the abortionists, it's not really their body they're talking about. They're actually talking about the third party in the relationship who has no voice that they just want to kill. Everybody else, it should be your body, your choice, your business, your choice. And the government should stay out of it. I, I am against the government imposing mandates for vaccines. I don't think they should, but you got to live with the consequences. There's something else I'm opposed to. It's the shaming that the media is doing in how they're covering the people who didn't get the vaccine who are now dying. I think the media in their head, I, I, I'm trying to, to guess what a malevolent group thinks in their head, which is never a good idea. And I do think increasingly much of the media is malevolent when it comes to these topics. But I do suspect that their thinking is that, hey, if we highlight the stories of the vaccine skeptics who are now dying of COVID, maybe that may give some self-reflection of people who are vaccine skeptics that maybe they need to go get the virus. But actually what's happening is it's just uh, uh, inviting delight and ridicule of the forces of Mordor against the people who aren't getting the vaccine. The level of shaming and ridicule and contempt by progressives on those who didn't get the vaccine and are now dying or dead is appalling. There is a study out again over the weekend, yet another study showing that progressives are less likely to have friends who are conservative than conservatives are progressives. Conservatives more often than not have progressive friends than progressives have conservative friends. And progressives online reacting to a reporter who said, I can't imagine not having friends with people I disagree with politically. Progressives are piling on the reporter for saying that, saying, well, you can't be friends with conservatives. They're all dishonest. They're, they're all contemptible. And so progressives have no problem shaming people who are dead of COVID because they conclude that they're a Trump voter. It's really contemptible behavior of people on the left. Man, how did I, I look, I realized at this point, I just, I, I hate everybody. I'm infuriated with everybody. Uh, the, the, the level of tit for tat, uh, nobody has principles anymore. Everyone just lives in reaction to the other side. And if the other side says you all got to get the, the vaccine, the, then my side says, no, the hell we're not. And the other side says, well, you shouldn't be able to go to a restaurant. If you haven't got the vaccine, we're like, ah, we're going to storm the restaurants and infect everybody. Can you not just like think for yourself and have some level of principle and value? without being caught up in a tribe and in a herd mentality. And when someone echoes the stupid talking point that it's segregation, you don't have to parrot it in the same way people on the left should stop parroting the stupid talking point that everything is racist. I saw the ACLU social media account tweeted out that the second amendment is a product of racism and, and uh, was put there to maintain slaves, which is historically not true. Whoever tweeted that is an idiot. There are words I want to say on this program that because we're on terrestrial radio, I cannot. So we will go with idiot. That person is an idiot. It is historically, factually not true. The Second Amendment is derived from the Glorious Revolution and the English Bill of Rights in 1689. The English Bill of Rights in 1689 had a right to keep and bear arms. Why? Because the King of England had decided to confiscate the landed gentry's arms 
so that they could not do to him what Charles I had happened to him by Oliver Cromwell. So they put it in the English Bill of Rights. It had nothing to do with slavery. And yet the left has taken up this talking point. I'm sure Nicole Hannah-Jones or, or some other liar out there on the left came up with it. And they all think, hmm, sounds compelling. I guess it's true because I read it on the internet from someone I agree with. There isn't a whole lot of difference between the people who believe the Second Amendment is a product of slavery and the people who won't take the vaccine because they believe there's a microchip in it. They're all the same level of stupid. And I am really tired of dealing with the stupid people out there. You know, here's the thing. People on the left have uh, decided to scare the bejesus out of everyone about the vaccine and about the virus. And the result is that everyone's crying wolf at this point and no one's taking it seriously. And I suspect most of the vaccine hesitancy out there now is not real hesitancy about the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. It's about whether or not it's that bad out there. Uh, case in point, uh, someone is out there uh, and I will, I will give credit to the idiot who did it. Uh, Bob Wachter is the chair of the University of San Francisco Department of Medicine. He tweets this out. Let's look at hospitalizations. On June 1st, we had one COVID patient in our 700-bed UCSF hospital. None were in ICU. Today, we've got 28 hospitalized, 15 on the floor, 13 in ICU, 7 on vents. A staggering increase. For perspective... There are 4.7 million people in the metropolitan San Francisco area, and only 28 of them are in the hospital. Maybe give a little perspective there, Bob, so people get a sense of this, as opposed to freaking out and then going and finding the data for themselves and say, wait a second, you got 4.8 million people and only 28 have COVID? That's not so bad. In fact, for all the scare and nightmare over the Delta variant, it appears there's a downward trend already in parts of the world, including in parts of this country, that had seen COVID explosions of the Delta variant. So when people are, are blowing up the numbers like that and scaring people over the data, I can understand why people are hesitant to get the vaccine thinking, well, maybe they've overstated it altogether. Maybe I don't really need the vaccine. Maybe if people were a little more honest and straightforward and truthful and put things in better perspective, there would be less hesitancy. Maybe if conservatives were honest and didn't call things segregation that weren't segregation, we could actually have rational conversations. Maybe if progressives stopped calling everything racist, we could have honest conversations. But, you know, that's probably not going to happen. So instead, we'll be daily reminded of stupid people on the internet believing stupid things that we have to get on here and rebut so that you do not get infected by the stupid gene. 